Hey everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a really cool subject, which is nitric oxide. Okay, don't get this confused with nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas that you get in the dentist office. Although that has a cool effect that does not impart health benefits, but nitric oxide does. Um, the discoverer of nitric oxide actually won a Pulitzer Prize for his research on nitric oxide. So what is nitric oxide? Um, yeah, nitric oxide is produced by the body um, through the consumption of nitrates, uh, arginine, or through just breathing air. Now I'm gonna talk about all the different ways. There are actually five different ways uh, our bodies can create nitric oxide. So uh, first, let's back up a little bit. Now, when I was uh, the category manager for Vitamin Shop, I was in charge of all the sports supplements for all of Vitamin Shop. And the biggest supplement, the best selling supplements was in the sports nutrition category, at least, was nitric oxide. So uh, a guy named Ed Bird, uh, who uh, was the uh, founder of MRI, actually brought this product to market and it was the number one selling product in GNC for five years straight. Um, number one selling product, not just sports nutrition, but <laughs> any product that they sold. And why did it get so widely popular? Well, they did a good job of explaining something that was discovered. And I'm going to pull it up in a chart so you can see what I'm talking about. But it's it's called the citrulline NO cycle. Um, so our body can take arginine, back convert it to citrulline, and then convert it back to arginine, and then combine it with nitric oxide synthase, or NOS, to form nitric oxide in our body. Now, the body will then take that nitric oxide and pull it into the veins, and that's what helps our bodies vasodilate. That's the opening of blood vessels in our uh, bloodstream. Now, this can help normalize blood pressure, uh, especially for uh, people who are anxious or hypertensive uh, or have high blood pressure. So a lot of health benefits for it. Um, it was interesting, the original nitric oxide uh, product started out with arginine. Now we know it's actually better to go the citrulline route, and I'll show you why. Um, this is the arginine, citrulline, and NOS cycle. So the, the body will actually take citrulline and then convert it to arginine. So if you have arginine present, the body will actually back convert arginine to citrulline and then use citrulline through the arginine cycle um, and then attach nitric oxide synthase to form the nitric oxide. All right, so a lot of chemistry there. What does all that chemistry mean? Well, originally the big benefits that were being touted was people love that feeling of the pump the pump. <laughs> and, and you know, it's a nice to feel all like full and feel those muscles full of blood, but there was really uh, technically true benefits to them in that it, by increasing blood flow to the muscle, you're actually allowing more nutrients and more oxygen, more sugars to get to the muscle for energy and for repair and recovery, um, including amino acids, but also when you vasodilate, when you open up that blood vessel, it allows more blood to flow from the muscle, allowing that, that uh, lactic acid that your body, all the waste products, the carbon dioxide, all the waste materials that your body just creates by working out to get away from the body so it doesn't create more damage. Because if, if your muscle holds on to all that waste products, just think of it like garbage sitting around your house, it starts to stink up the joint. Same thing, it starts to degrade the muscle and can damage the muscle. So you want that vasodilation. Now, our body naturally vasodilates when we work out. It's a natural process. 
Now, when you think about working out, when you're working out with a lot of intensity, that's gonna draw blood up into the muscles so the body naturally wants to vasodilate. So what you're doing by using nitric oxide products is actually helping the body do what it's supposed to do already in a good workout situation. The other thing that the body does is try to breathe in air. Well, one, you need that oxygen to oxidize fat or fat burn, convert, and break down that fat for usable energy. So when you're breathing in really heavy, it's because your body needs more oxygen to burn fat. So that's a good thing when you can reach that intensity level of your workouts that you're breathing really heavy. But something interesting also happens when you do that. When you breathe in heavy through your nose, when you get that motion going, you're actually pulling in nitric oxide and oxygen that the body can actually use to create more nitric oxide. Now that's an interesting method because again, it's tied into a really natural cycle. When you exercise, you want more oxygen for fat burning, but you want more nitric oxide so that your body can open up those blood vessels and allow more blood so it can get nutrients to the muscle for growth and repair and waste byproducts away from the muscle. So nitric oxide is really, really beneficial in all those things. Now, the original nitric oxide products were about three grams um, uh, of, of the arginine. Now we know it's probably about six grams of citrulline that is, is probably even more effective than the original three gram of arginine. Now, unfortunately, because a lot of sports nutrition companies out there are just cutting costs and trying to say, oh, we've got arginine in our product. They're putting as little as one gram of arginine in there, which is basically not going to do much at all for you. Um, it's a shame because it gives the whole sports nutrition field a, a, a bad rap uh, because there are a few bad players out there who are cutting their ingredients down to ineffective dosages. And look, you don't have to take my word for it. Just look up the arginine and citrulline studies for effectiveness. Uh, the journal, the JISSN, the Journal for International Sports Nutrition, um, those are great guys to look at as far as that. And, and the standard for most of the research out there is about uh, six grams of citrulline for an ideal boost in um, nitric oxide. Now, there are other methods to boost nitric oxide, which I think are actually better than the arginine. Now, here's something interesting. You know, people are talking about, oh, get more arginine, right? By taking an arginine supplement. Well, isn't arginine in protein? Of course it is. <laughs> Now, here's what's interesting. You know, you got all these muscle building guys saying whey protein's the best protein, and then you take arginine uh, to try to get nitric oxide. But let's actually look at whey protein compared to pea protein. I'm going to pull this up right here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but the number two up there is arginine. And the first column is whey protein. So what you're looking at in the whey protein column, and then look at arginine, which is the number two, down arginine and you can see that's about two and a half times more arginine in pea protein than in whey protein <laughs> that's right pea protein will give you a better pump by two and a half times <laughs> than whey protein all this thing about oh take whey protein for muscle and for pump and pea protein is two and a half times more arginine in it. Actually, most plant products are higher in arginine than, than animal products. So whether you get your protein from meat, dairy, eggs, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Arginine is really high in plants. And, and that's great because that's a great way to start. Arginine, and remember, can back convert to citrulline, and then the citrulline can be used to produce nitric oxide. But there's another pathway. So the body needs nitric oxide. It's such an important thing for lots of different purposes, not just vasodilation in our body, that our body is, has a preference for nitric oxide. Um, so our body has found a couple of different pathways in which it can create nitric oxide. The second pathway is called nitrates, uh, or the nitrate nitrite NO pathway. So this is how it goes. Our, the plants out there, especially dark greens, some root vegetables like beets and even cacao, 
are really high in nitrates. Arugula is probably one of the highest in nitrates of all the dark greens out there. A really healthy green. I really suggest you including it. I do. I put uh, eat arugula salads on a frequent basis too. Uh, amazing. Now, nitrates much better than uh, the arginine and citrulline NO cycle because nitrates last so much longer in the body. Studies have shown that by taking beet juice, you can boost nitric oxide in the body for up to two full days, whereas arginine and citrulline <laughs> can last only a matter of hours. And that's because nitric oxide is a free radical. You think, okay, free radical that's not a very good thing no but it's a necessary free radical it actually serves a purpose so what we want to do is is in with nitrates you want to actually have lots of antioxidants or polyphenols in them and that's exactly what's in plants remember you can get nitrates in cured meats what they found out remember there used to be all this bad press like stay away from nitrates nitrates are bad for you nitrates can cause cancer that is true in context. Now let's look at that. So nitrates, when they're digested and go into the system, when they're in the gut can actually form what's a byproduct of nitrates and they're breaking down called nitrosamines. Now nitrosamines have shown to cause cancer. Then Jeff, why are you telling me to consume nitrates? Aren't not nitrates bad? No, in context. So when you're eating meats, and, and animal products, you don't have this high polyphenol and vitamin C and antioxidant content that you would have in the whole fruits and vegetables. Those antioxidants quench that nitrosamine, especially vitamin C. And where is vitamin C found? Only in plants. That's right. No animal product contains any vitamin C at all. So you've got the animal products their nitrates like cured meats, bacon, uh, ham, um, uh, meats that have been uh, cured with nitrates or nitrites. That is where the problem is because those form nitrosamines and then you don't have the antioxidants, the polyphenols, or especially the vitamin C present to neutralize the nitrosamines. And that's why consuming meat, dairy, eggs may form be cancer forming. Nitrosamines is a big part of how animal products form cancers in our guts and why plants with high nitrate contents don't do this because they come pre-packaged in their whole food state with vitamin C, polyphenols, and other antioxidants that quench that nitrosamine as soon as it's formed. You don't have to worry about it. So you get all the benefits of the nitrates forming nitric oxide without the negative effects that you would get from meat forming nitrosamines. The nitrosamines are, are taken away and neutralized by the antioxidants in the plants, and they stay there and form cancer when you consume animal proteins. So that's the big difference. And I wanted to make that clear because some people have confusion, like, well, I heard nitrite, nitrates are bad for you. So let's talk about how nitrates work. So nitrates, when you consume them in plants, like dark greens, especially high in nitrates, beets, very high in nitrates, cacao, or chocolate or cocoa, very high in nitrates. So when that hits our mouth, our mouth secretes an enzyme. That enzyme actually turns the nitrates into nitrites, I-T-E-S. Then the nitrites go and hit our stomach and our stomach acid converts the nitric oxide, nitrites to nitric oxide. So it's a three-step process, nitrates, nitrites, nitric oxide in the stomach. And our body has each step way to convert that. Now, why is it so important to have nitric oxide in our stomach? Now, this is pretty cool. So nitric oxide, once it's formed in the stomach, helps the body create a mucosa layer. Now, in the stomach, this is really important because this mucosa layer protects the stomach lining from being damaged by high acid content in our stomachs. So our body actually sloughs off this, this um, mucus layer over time. So we got to keep consuming more nitrates, creating more nitric oxide, stimulate that nice mucosa layer that protects our inside of our stomach. 
What happens when we don't? That mucosa layer stuffs off and the acid starts burning a hole and giving us peptic ulcers, damaging our stomach lining. This is why consuming dark green vegetables is so important on a daily basis. It helps not only open up our blood vessels, bringing our blood pressure into normalization. Blood pressure is one of the, blood, high blood pressure is one of the leading causes of health issues for Americans in the United States. Um, amazing that we have fruits and vegetables right there that are the answer to it just by simply consuming more. Not only that, it helps repair our stomach acid. The number one most consumed uh, pharmaceutical over-the-counter drug is for stomach acid. Why? Because we're putting meats in our stomach that cause us a lot of uh, stomach acid to perform and not consuming enough green vegetables that protect our stomach from this high acid content. And that's how we get the GERD, the heartburn, the repeats, the, the ulcers, all these damaging effects of overproduction of acid. And then we have to take a, 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 so like, uh, something to reduce the actual things. That's the number one over-the-counter drug taken is uh, anti-acids. So we put stuff in our mouth that tells our body to produce more acid because meat and, and eggs and stuff are hard to break down. So our body has to produce more acid. Remember, vegetables have lots of enzymes in them. So they do part of the work so our body can reduce the amount of acid, not overproduce that acid. So then we get GERD from all this acid coming up, right? Or acid reflux or uh, indigestion. And and, and so what do we do? We take something that tells our stomach to stop producing the acid. <laughs> then the then this stuff can't digest. And then that undigested matter gets into our digestive tract and starts spoiling or putrefying and causing damage and IBS. And oh my God, I could go on. <laughs> but let's get back to the nitric oxide. This is just one more reason why nitric oxide is so important for our overall health. Now, let's get into muscle. Nitric oxide, this is a nice study here, and I'm going to shoot it up on the comment section. Check out this study. Great study that showed there is a direct correlation between increase of nitric oxide from consuming nitrate-rich vegetables. Well, I hope that posted it's showing it's not, but... There it is. Okay, so dietary nitric, nitrate intake is positively associated with muscle function in men and women, independent of your physical activity. So it helps with your muscle function, even if you're not exercising on a regular basis. This was published in the Journal of Nutrition just recently, March 24th, and this is amazing. So it actually increases strength and increases muscle gains. And so they found that those consuming the highest amounts of dark green vegetables had the best benefits from the nitrates. Once again, more plants eating, more muscle grows, more strength. This whole thing about eating animal products, getting you stronger, is just wrong. It's wrong. It's the plants that are doing it. And there's the research for you. It's right there. And that's why I want to say, look, I'm we're in plant-based fitness nutrition, not because I'm trying to convert everybody to a plant-based diet. No, because I am trying to give you the best information that help you achieve your best physical fitness levels through higher strength, through higher recovery, through better muscle function health. This is what's going to help you. And consume if consuming vegetables is the right way, then I'm going to say it. And that's exactly what the research is showing. Now, let's talk about the number three way that our body actually produces nitric oxide and why this is important for immune health. Nitric oxide, immune health. This is so cool. And I just actually learned this recently. So I'm excited to share about this about with you. So we have little cilial cells um, in our nasal cavity. There's a whole lot of nitric oxide stored in our nasal cavity. And I'm like, what is that about, right? So I'm doing reading through the research, and this is amazing. So our body actually uses nitric oxide. Remember, I, I told you that it's a um, nitric oxide is actually a free radical, so it can actually tear down things. Well, our body actually, interestingly, stores this nitric oxide in our nasal cavity, 
and actually uses it. And I'm going to quote this for you <laughs> because it's very cool. Um, so naturally occurring nitric oxide in the nasal cavities, this is directly from the research, in the nasal cavities is a primary defense in humans needed to kill invading bacteria, funguses, or fungi, and viruses. Boom, there it is. So we can, by consuming dark greens and things that boost our nitric oxide levels, like arginine, which is higher in plants, once again. So eating plants or eating plants will both get you more nitric oxide, which will increase the amount of nitric oxide. And as you're exercising and breathing through your nose, you're creating even more nitric oxide. And what does that do? Why is all this nitric oxide in our nose? Because this is one of the very first things that airborne viruses, fungi, and bacteria enter our body through our nose because we're breathing. So our body takes this nitric oxide, these cilial cells there. So the bacteria come and land on the cilial cells, right? And then our nitric oxide is secreted and attacked and basically tears down the outside of the cells of the viruses, bacteria, fungi, and pathogens and kills them. So our body is using nitric oxide in our nose, the point of entry for viruses and pathogens, and using that nitric oxide to destroy the virus, the bacteria, the pathogen. This is awesome. This is one more reason I believe that consuming a high vegetable, antioxidant, polyphenol rich fruits and vegetables diet produces more of that nitric oxide, allows our body to store that nitric oxide in our nose and destroy those bacteria and viruses upon entry. This is the protection that our body needs. So the more you consume, the better you are. And the more you exercise, exercise also increases naturally nitric oxide. It, it en engages more nitric oxide and it gauges more antioxidant capacity. As we exercise, we create free radicals. So our body engages its natural glutathione and other antioxidant uh, mechanisms to secrete more antioxidants, activate more antioxidants. And then our body can use that to help neutralize the free radicals and, and keep them from damaging us. But, so number four is exercise. And now you see Great for your stomach health and intestinal health, nitric oxide. Great for muscle health and stimulating muscle growth and strength. Great for immune health and actually destroying bacteria and virus right at the point of entry into our body. And now it is, even goes further. So number four way to boost nitric oxide is by working out and breathing through the nose was number three, dietary nitrates, number two, and of course, arginine, citrulline, getting enough uh, good plant-based proteins, which are much higher, two to three times higher in arginine by consuming plant proteins versus animal proteins. So another way that plant proteins are superior, both for health, for immune system, and for bodybuilding, and for muscle and strength than animal proteins, once again. But there's a fifth way. Now, arginine and citrine works not so well, <laughs> to be honest with you. Even though it's very popular and very used by a lot of uh, uh, people, um, it's, it's probably the least efficient of, of the different pathways that our body used to boost nitric oxide. So I didn't want to touch that category at all. Uh, you know, people have asked me, why aren't you, if all these health benefits are going on, why aren't you producing a nitric oxide product? Well, I wanted to wait until we found something that was truly the best and truly the best approach or pathway. So number five is a whole different pathway altogether. And I think it's the best pathway by far out of all of them, not only in its health benefits, but also in its ability to produce additional health benefits, not just increasing more nitric oxide. 
So both being maximally effective at increasing nitric oxide, but doing it in the healthiest way. That's when I was saying, okay, now I've got something that I can bring to market that really truly promotes health as much as it does increase that nitric uh, oxide for all of the rest of the health benefits, but do it in the most efficient and effective way that the body actually uses. So what is that fifth way that the body helps create nitric oxide? So our body can create nitric oxide through all these breathing, through uh, arginine and citrulline found in, in our plant proteins, through nitrates naturally occurring in the plants, right? All those are, are available to us through our diet. But this nitric oxide molecule is very unstable and it can be destroyed in a matter of seconds. So if it gets destroyed, our body has to keep producing more and more and more and constantly. So we have to keep eating more and more constantly to keep up with our nitric oxide production. There is a different way. There is a different approach. And that approach is to stabilize that nitric oxide so it lasts longer in the system and can have more of those health benefiting effects without being, oh, here's some nitric oxide, oh, it's destroyed. Oh, here's some nitric oxide, here's destroyed in our body. The nitric oxide turnover doesn't allow our body to have the lasting health benefits. This is where that changes. So we will be launching at the end of this month, hopefully, maybe early next month, our new pre-workout product with a whole different approach to nitric oxide that goes in and creates a stable environment and is shown to boost that nitric oxide level present in the bloodstream by almost 230%. And it does it using seven natural fruit um, vegetables amazing. They were selected for their high polyphenolic content. Polyphenols are these things that are amazingly powerful um, um, phytonutrients in plants, but some plants are exceptional at them. So they, they piece together seven of these different uh, high polyphenol rich um, plants in just a very small dose. That's how powerful and effective they are and an amazing boost and stability of that nitric oxide. So you're not only getting all the health benefits from this, these polyphenols and antioxidants in the seven vegetables, you're getting maximum and duration stimulation of nitric oxide. And you'll find that in our new pre-workout coming out soon. So there's different approaches. Definitely up your greens intake, up your beet intake, uh, up your um, uh, protein from plants. Again, you can see that higher amount of arginine citrulline coming from plants than from animal proteins, plus the nitrates found in, in plants in healthy forms. Remember, no nitrosamines, so none of the negative health effects, cancer-inducing health effects that you would get from eating animal products just don't happen because you're it, when you're eating whole food plant-based diet rich in polyphenols antioxidants and vitamin c um, so this is the proper way to boost nitric oxide for gut health and intestinal health for stomach health for immune health for muscle health strength endurance uh, increased muscle size even with nitric oxide all of these health benefits and of course vasodilation allowing more blood flow to get to the brain to the muscles to the heart to the internal organs and get all that waste byproduct out by opening up those blood vessels always remember to exercise drink lots of water and enjoy the health benefits of nitric oxide i hope i cleared up that uh, some questions because i know there's a lot of questions um uh, around this whole process, but there are many different pathways that the body can use. And I think we found the ideal pathway. Uh, the body can use a pathway of arginine citrulline cycle. It's a cycle of pathway that works inside the body of conversions that creates nitric oxide. You can do it through nitrates, which are found in dark green vegetables, especially uh, like spinach and arugula, um, but also in beets, very high in beets, um, and even cacao or chocolate. Uh, and then, of course, 
breathing heavily. So get yourself into exercise where you're breathing heavily through the nose. Running is great for that. Remember to breathe through your nose. These cilial cells going back and forth inside your nose that are releasing the nitric oxide, they act as a shuttle. They, they go over here and they grab the bacteria and they shuttle it forward and they shuttle it forward and they shuttle it forward. So every time you're breathing in and then breathing out, you're shuttling, you're shuttling bad bacteria, viruses, and fungi out of the body. Get out, get out, get out. So every time you're doing this, in the Ayurvedic and, and yogic cultures, they actually do something called the breath of fire, um, which they use breathing techniques um, through the nose so that you're actually forcing this mechanism of cleansing the body of funguses, bacteria, and, and viruses by breathing in and out. Exercise does the same thing, especially endurance exercise, or if you're doing the standard um, weights exercise, do a little bit of cardio before, about 10 minutes of cardio, intense cardio, like a, a stair climber or something like that. Get that heart and breath rate up. And then when you get in there, do a higher rep set so that you're breathing really hard every time or reduce the amount of rest in between your sets. And that'll get you breathing really hard too as well. Remember that oxygen is increasing. You're breathing hard because your body says, I need more oxygen to oxidize fat. That is called fat burning. You to break down that fat, use it for energy. Every time you're breathing in heavy, you're activating a fat oxidation. So that's very important, but you're also increasing the nitric oxide in your nose, giving your body the best defense against pathogens. So that's why exercise is so important, why eating your vegetables is so important, and why we believe in a plant-based fitness approach to improving your health. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope I answered a lot of questions. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below. I will answer them all. Thank you for listening and tune in next week. I have a really special guest coming on board. I think you're gonna like her amazing story. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it then, but an incredible story of triumph and empowerment that you just really have to hear, um, heart moving. Um, I enjoyed uh, listening to her, and I think you will too. She's a special person. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next week.